Okay, so this is probably one of the last, if not, um, yeah, probably one of the last, if not the last deck that I have from ARG Vegas. All the other decks, um, there, there's two of them that I that I lost out of my camera, so that's that's a bummer. Oh well, if I can recover those, I, I will, but it's not that big of a deal. The event's uh, come and gone, and I kind of want to focus on set six and as well as the celebrations, and maybe even the, what, Orlando, I believe? Ah, neither here nor there. This is Broly Maidens by my uh my good man eric he is a vegas local he and i play from time to time a number of times i think i think i even played him last week uh not that i think about it but if anything he did place uh top 32 which was the second or 22nd i believe he placed 22nd something like that still shout out to paulo who placed 17th but hey got, got some representation uh from a local scene and hopefully going into celebrations and as well as other events on the west side later in the year hopefully let's just hope that's all we can really do. Uh, we can we can do even better. But this is all of the deck, or all of the deck, right? That's that's what I'm saying. It right, right? <laughs> this is this is all the deck in its full glory on DBS decks since uh, Shenron Lair doesn't really hold a side deck. Um, so I'm gonna go through it pretty quickly. I'm gonna go through the matchups. I'm gonna go through uh, basically his thought process as far as one in uh, turn one, two, three, and then as well as the sideboard and uh, anything that he would change basically. So um, of course this is Broly. Uh, if you don't know Broly already, this is the reason why I didn't really explain it in my last deck profile, but he is a attack take a life, draw one on the front side, flip two for active, and the other side he taps one um, as far as the rest mode, uh, a battle card that is, and then he can take a life and untap uh, pretty much any card that is tapped already on your side. So from field to, uh, to uh, leader to energy to battle card, etc, etc. You already know. And of course he draws one on the, on the back side. So let's go through it really quick. So um, I'm sure you've seen other Broly Maidens, Maiden decks before, right? And some of this stuff, I mean, when you really think about it, an, an engine can't really change. And if you do change it, sometimes it gets out of hand and as well as less consistent. So uh, I would I would say that to most people if they are comparing this to other Broly decks. The other thing is that uh, a lot of other Broly decks or Broly Maiden decks haven't really been proven. Um, this has been proven, so it's, it's done pretty well, and I think I, I'm very proud of uh, Eric to, for, for doing that as well and um, doing relatively well and getting to the top 32. But uh, the other thing is that I think uh, Broly Manius is getting a little bit more representation because I personally played two of them at ARG Vegas and as well as the other part. Um, there's, there are plenty of other ones. Like I, I've, I've seen at least three or four of them, uh, including them and as well as Eric and, and a couple others. So just to give you a, a, a couple of thoughts or give you give you a heads up in the future, like this could be a deck that you could, could have to watch out for. You may have to watch out for. So going from left to right on the top part for all of the green is really the engine. So the top three for the one drop is our Barto. <laughs> searches out any universe uh, two that is so Everybody here in the green are the targets for that. Uh, Girl Warrior Rebrian looks at the top seven, gets a Maiden. So the only targets for that are going to be these guys over here. So um, if you see here where it says choose up to one, if we kind of go back here, we can we can see a little bit better. Uh, yeah, look at the top seven and choose a Maiden Squadron uh, among them and add to your hand while Zarbato uh, chooses the universe two for the top three. So again, the, uh, this guy wouldn't be it. If you look at the bottom right is a uh, free blocker, which is really good. And as long as any of these guys are out, uh, universe two guys are out. And then, uh, this would be it. And for the, uh, top three, uh, top seven <laughs> for maintenance squadron, this would be it because it is a maintenance squadron. This would be it as well. So, uh, just keep that in mind when building this and building this and as well as playing it. The other thing is that, um, uh, he, she does have barrier, so she's going to be the target for her. Uh, she does not evolve on top of her um, or herself, so just keep that in mind. It's only on Maiden Squadron Rebrand. Uh, so yeah, that, if you haven't watched out for this, if you haven't watched any of Eggman's videos, because he put Maidens, like he used to put Maidens, and I guess right now, I mean, yeah, I'm sure he's made a couple now, but he's, he used to put Maidens in everything, so just, yeah, there you go. <laughs> if you didn't know, now you know. 
Biggie Smalls, 2019. Um, and uh, she has barrier, so she's going to be evolving on her, in which this person evolves for three, two green. So watch out for the two green. This does have a kind of a limited area of green or limited choices of green. So keep that in mind as well for the evolve cost. She does have barrier, and then she does have uh, an auto in which she KOs something. Choose up to one battle card to KO it. And the other part of it is that uh, if Kunkunsa and as well as the other chick is on board uh they have to drop two when she attacks but that's not really here nor here nor there because you're going to be f uh, focusing on the rebian over here which does um make them uh drop two after you swing with it no matter what and of course if we kind of go back here so this one is a, a free blocker for any of the universe two people on board kakunsa the reason why she's in here is that yes yeah, you, you have to pay four for the um to, to actually even play her but this is really just dedicated green energy as he as we were saying and as well as just to uh not whiff out on the girl warrior rebrand Re basically so the top seven the only uh targets are herself her and as well as main and transformation complete so or rebrand transformation complete so you have to consider it like uh to to make sure you don't brick and or whiff more often than not especially later in the game uh Kukunsa might help that uh, not only for combo power, for energy, and in a desperate time, I guess, you can always play her for four and, and try to go for critical. I don't, I don't know. But that is the, the thought process behind that um, uh, for, for her. So in case you're wondering why why would you have that, that's that's why. Uh, so anyway, so you KO something with the, uh, the Rebrian, and then you evolve with her. She specifies with one green EX Evolve Energy uh, on this card only. And when you play on, on top of her, she can switch to active mode. So you can swing for 25 and then um, uh, go ahead and go for a double strike, which doesn't have barrier, by the way. Uh, and then when it attacks, they have to drop two. We'll kind of come back to that, but that is the, the gist for the Universe 2 slash Maidens engine. Uh, we play for uh, Jekyll because it's it's not really important to play Shigesh in this. Um, the four Jacko is really clutch because it's a zero cost 10K and then you're gonna be at four life pretty easily uh, early into the game and uh, pretty quickly into the game. And, and, and Jacko helps quite a lot to draw and to get you what you need in the combo phase uh, where you need it in the combo phase. But uh, he put four Vegeta Strive being the best because um, uh, Rebrand doesn't really get around barrier. He is a yellow, uh, a yellow card and as well as 5k combo. So I don't really see the downside of that. Really, really I really don't. And then the, the other part of it is that uh, Kami is in this. So that way, in case they go wide, you can go ahead and play this. At the very least, he is a draw. Same thing for Kronoa. Uh, is it easily sided out card if need be for like minus Killy zone or something of that nature? But in playing four Broly matches in ARG, this was the right call to do it. I played two in my GT deck. I played one more in the side. Um, it was just it was just needed, honestly. And I think honestly, if er Eric, if you're watching this, let me know if <laughs> the, one of the reasons why you played Kronoa is because I you went against my Broly GT deck. I feel like everybody at locals just like after playing that deck, they wanted to main board Kronoa, and I was just like, why, why you gotta do that to me? Anyway. Uh, Broly was uh, was prevalent. Uh, Shigesh was uh, is still an issue. Kronoa is still needed in the side or main. I completely get it. Anyway, Toki Toki is just another chance to draw and as well as to get one of these bad boys out. Um, bad boy, bad girl, game of girl, game of boy. You know what I'm saying? And then the uh, four of Dark Temptation Toa. So not only are you going to be swinging twice because of the leader effect over here uh, to drop them two and then four. And then there's going to be another one over here. Uh, so of course you can always save the Dark Temptation Toa for uh, Broly as far as a leader swing. So that way you're going 20 because uh, it, it does boost you up to uh, a 5k to 20 on the awakened side. 5k or 15k on the unawakened side but most of the time you're gonna be awakened so no big deal two bad ring in the main really really good against a, a 30,000 double striker yes you read that right 30,000 double striker uh so that's come on that's you're just it, it makes sense right <laughs> three cold blood less uh cold blood less is still pretty important uh, a lot of people are kind of putting down the card um against janemba it might be well, with the new Destruction Rare, it might be a little more uh, relevant, but in general, Janemba doesn't really need Cold Bloodless, or you don't really need Cold Bloodless in 
uh, in a Janemba matchup, but I would still say Koba Less shuts down a lot of different things. So if you're going against this deck, for instance, you can you can go ahead and shut down this combo right here and make sure it doesn't restain, and as well as that you're not um, going to be dropping two cards. Of course, Battery Linkser does get around that, and then on the side, Maddie's Killer Zone does get around that. So a couple things to consider as far as that goes. Two Crusher Ball, uh, I would imagine, uh, he didn't really say too much about this, but I would imagine that he played this uh, against a lot of matchups that need on play effects. So like at all costs Vegeta, um, anything like, uh, any, anything that you know is gonna go for game or swing twice. So like the three drop, um, uh, Vegeta, Jiren, if anybody's playing Jiren, <laughs> and, and things of that. Also, nature. I'm gonna say that again. I'm gonna. I've been saying that quite a lot. Three time magic. Just need counters. Um, would you Would you run green counters? I don't know. Maybe because you know you don't have too much uh, green. He didn't say too much as far as what to change when it came to the ratios of uh, the colors. Uh, mixing in this black sort of uh, engine here with the answer cards slash silver bullets, and then as well as a Toa. You know, I can. I can see where you can squeeze in some more uh, green instead or dropping down a couple of these uh, Vegetas, but you always have these in your hand. Most likely you're going to be drawing one turn one or turn two because it's at four. Uh, so if you don't kill something with the Rebrian turn three, you're going to be killing something uh, with a Vegeta turn four or an earlier turn. So um, I, I can understand. I can definitely understand where, where this is coming coming from so as far as the side we have one further than shushing champa we have uh three of the flying nimbus so more negates for more aggro heavy decks i would imagine and more yellow i would imagine as well pretty easy to swing uh put this into the kanoa slot in order to get a little more defense and uh not die basically so you couldn't if you're going against red blue Hurigan, um or something similar like pan i mean that, that that's an easy switch out and then we have three minus kelly zone again if you cobalus any of these things right here everything else doesn't really need a doesn't isn't not really a cobalus target but minus kelly zone is uh pretty detrimental when you when you're trying to go for a game and restand your big girl dark power mass saying uh that's really for the shenron matches for child's wish for broly uh veggies that is and as well as anything that plays anything for free for 15k or less haru haru uh that's that it makes sense if you're playing minus killy zone haru haru uh is an easy add to that so you can always play minus killy zone play a couple of these for free and then go into your plays without fearing the cold blood lust and then we have two ma massing in for uh smaller weenies you know you know the type of ones where uh they kind of build up like if you have one two three or one, two, uh, a, or two, a couple of these, you, you know what I'm saying. It's the type of thing where if they don't have blocker, you can go ahead and clear the board pretty quickly and then have something that is a one cost 20,000 double striker. Um, and I think he's going to be relevant for, for a lot of sets to come, I would say. And then of course, a slight spice here with the beyond darkness Demigra. And if you count out the the uh the the total cards here as far as black cards and of course you can add in minus killy zone or dark power easily to that um and you, you probably yeah yeah you could probably do that dark power um one minus killy for the vegetas that type of thing I, I think i would i would do that um you would have one two three four five six and then a ten here and then a couple more from the side that's easy to get seven um seven cards into the drop that are black and then pay five energy to get the Demigra out. So I would say um, that, that's a good tech. He said that this is really mainly against uh, Shenron and I think it this has some merit to say that um, it, it probably can do well against Janemba as well because most of the stuff that Janemba does play um, are battle cards so uh you can rip most of those things off and then the next turn if you're around that turn because five energy is a lot um you can go ahead and go for a game because he's not going to have too much to to defend it with even if he counters so as far as the matchups go he went against uh round one shenron gogeta he run, won that one i don't know uh the two wells or two ones he didn't put that down god damn it eric <laughs> but it's okay uh i mean it doesn't really matter the Round two was Universe 7 Frieza. I can see how he, he would win that one. Um, Universe 7 Frieza is not really doing too much while Broly is setting up uh, his, his maidens and then uh, making him drop cards over and over again, especially since you need more and more cards, especially if you're focusing on Victory Strike uh, to evolve and, and uh, put in the, like you, you need Universe 7 cards in your hand, basically. You, you need a, quite a big hand to pull off the combo. 
round three mill number that's pretty much uh what the deck is uh countering here so hand destruction as well as slash uh, a little bit of aggro makes sense mono red pan uh was a win round four so uh i'm, I'm actually interested how, how to, to hear how that actually went but uh he got the win so i'm, I'm happy for that broly lineage was uh ended up in a draw that's interesting uh, i'm guessing you couldn't really close it out or he uh the opponent couldn't close it out round six chains and oh pan was a loss so again that's what i was thinking of i was like mono red pan more aggressive Chains and pan a little bit more tempo, but I can see where um, he would lose that with uh, minus Kelly zone slash uh, for seeing hit and Zeno. So you know, as soon as they mess up your board uh, in a combo deck like this, it's gonna get a little uh, a little annoying. Round seven was Hirudagon Gogeta. He was he won that one. Cool. Uh, Mono blue is really susceptible to hand destruction, so I can see that. And then round eight was Dimension Hurdigan. I remember this one actually. He he uh it was against the mono blue dimension support trunks uh i think he was at table what seven six something like that in the last round i remember watching that one um it looked a little rough uh, i went down to his paces and um uh, i guess it was just too much aggro that's that's basically what he was saying when it comes to the turn one to turn three type thing is usually that you would draw with one of the bullets like Kronoa or toki toki or kami Turn two, we do the Rebrian. Uh, you search the top seven, and then you get what you need. Turn three, you go ahead and pop something with the Rebrian, the big girl, and then you awaken because most of the time I'm going to be attacking, or you're going to be attacking, so that way you're going to be awakening early. And then you evolve on top of the big girl with the other big girl with the EX evolve and swing again, uh, and then um, go ahead and discard two to four cards, depending if you're going to want to take a life, um, and, and and do it that way. And of course. You would go down to uh, five, or they would be at four or five life, uh, turn three or turn four. So I can I can see that. It also states that the worst matchup was Dimension Hurtigan, um, because it was a little bit more uh, aggro, and of course Janemba was the biggest counter. As far as changes go, he does state that uh, if he took out two of the Toa and then main board two and the Scientist Fu, I do believe. Um, so that way you can have uh, a couple more finishers. And uh, as well as uh, maybe a, a second Champa either in the main or the side. And I do agree, since he stated that uh, Rebian was only the, the only finisher that he really had. I, I think I, I do agree with that. With, and with a combo deck, you really do need some versatility, and you do want to make sure that uh, you have what you need to do, or you have what you need to close out. And if things don't go as planned, if you get Zenoed or something like that, it can get uh, kind of annoying to to deal with uh, a post Zeno hand in a combo deck overall very cool deck i've played against it i haven't played the deck itself but i mean i've i've seen people play it many a times uh, i definitely wanted to go ahead and showcase this deck give a little shout out to him give a little credit to him and uh overall wanted to see people's thoughts uh as far as this deck and any other variation of this deck goes if you have any suggestions for him definitely let him know let us know in the comments uh like dislike subscribe if you are new if you are subscribed already i don't know what you're doing how'd you find how'd you find this video how are you all the way to the end of the video and you're still not subscribed that is just crazy to me but i will see you in the next one later